Hi there everyone, I'm Thiru from the Meteorological Service, Singapore. Recently, impressive photos of lightning lit night skies have been shared extensively on social media. Now, while lightning is captivating, it is also very dangerous. And on today's episode of Let's Ask MSS, we will learn all about its formation, risks, and also, why are lightning strikes so common in Singapore? So joining us today is Avesta. So Avesta, Elaine in our previous video shared that cumulonimbus clouds can produce showers with lightning. But what exactly is it about them that can produce lightning? Right, so as we recall, cumulonimbus clouds grow taller due to intense convection. And as they do, liquid water freezes to form ice crystals. Due to strong updrafts and downdrafts, ice crystals collide turbulently. Smaller ones gain a positive charge while moving upwards, and larger ones gain a negative charge while moving downwards. This leads to charge separation. Eventually, the voltage difference is so large that air is no longer an effective insulator and lightning can occur. I see. So now the cloud is ready to form lightning, but there are different types of lightning, right? That's right. About 80% of lightning is intracloud or intercloud lightning, and the rest are cloud to ground lightning. From the cloud base, the negative charges move downwards through a channel of ionized air known as the stepped leader. From the ground, induced positive charges may stream towards and eventually connect with the step leader. This forms a bright flash, known as the return stroke. With this open channel, several additional weaker flashes may occur. All of this occurs in just a few tenths of a second. As it does, there is rapid thermal expansion of air along this pathway, creating the booming sound of thunder. Wow, that is interesting! So, Singapore has on average 167 thunderstorm days in a year. And we can attribute this mainly to the rapid buildup of cumulonimbus clouds by air convection, right? I'm sure our viewers are keen to learn which parts of Singapore have more frequent lightning strikes. Is there a difference across the island? That's a good question, and yes, there actually is. So based on this lightning flash density map from our studies in 2013 to 2018, Western Singapore receives more lightning flashes on average than Eastern Singapore. <laughs> Lightning in Singapore also occurs more frequently in the inter-monsoon months of April, May, October and November, as light winds allow for stronger ground heating and promotes convection. The MyAV app and the MSS website both indicate where cloud-to-ground lightning strikes were most recently detected. As safety is paramount, it is important to note that whenever lightning is detected nearby, we should seek shelter in nearby buildings, away from trees and isolated structures. We should also stay away from water bodies such as the sea or swimming pool. Right. There's a common misconception that lightning only strikes where rain occurs. In fact, lightning has been observed to strike more than 10 kilometers away from the main thunderstorm. Indeed. And that brings us to our final question. Is Singapore the place with the most lightning strikes in the world? Well, Singapore does indeed have a very high incidence of lightning, with an average of 5 to 28 flashes per square kilometer per year, and up to 50 for certain localized parts of Singapore. This of course can't compare to Lake Maracaibo in northern Venezuela, which according to NASA statistics, can receive over 230 flashes per square kilometre per year. Wow, that is quite a lot. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you all for joining us and remember that you can obtain the latest weather updates from the MyNV app and our website. Have a great day and we'll see you again soon on Let's Ask MSS. Mm -hmm.